Assalamu alaikum students this is Farwa Patul your O level computer science instructor and welcome to my channel learn to teach so in the previous video we have seen uh, the structure diagrams that is one of the methods used to design and construct a solution to a problem now let's move towards the second method that is flowcharts yes in this video i'm going to tell you all about flowcharts its definition the flowchart symbols that we use and how why there is a need to use the flowcharts okay so let's begin with the video first of all let me share the definition of flowchart with you when we talk about flowchart there are some things that you need to keep in your mind that what is a flowchart first of all before flowchart uh, flow let's let me just tell you about algorithm. You must know that what is an algorithm, then you will able to understand flowcharts. So algorithm is basically when you are doing a task and you write down the instructions step by step for it. So in simple words, it's a step by step representation of any of any task that you want to do. So it can be anything in our daily life. We do so many tasks, but when we divide it into step by step, uh, but the order is very important. Let's take a common example. We want to make a juice. So for that, what will we do? Uh, let's suppose it's an orange juice. So we will take some oranges, then we will peel them off and then we will put it in the grinder and switch on the grinder, make the juice and then final put it in any of the glass so it's a very common day-to-day -day example in which we need to define a particular task into its steps one by one so that it will be easier for us to complete a particular task so this is basically a kind of algorithm algorithms are basically written in terms of sentences or in a common language but when i talk about flowcharts flowcharts it's the representation of an algorithm when you are representing any algorithm algorithm remember that algorithm is written in a common language and in form of sentences just the way i'm writing this algorithm one by one in form of sentences but when i convert these sentences or these steps into a diagram i call it flowcharts so flowchart is nothing but the representation of an algorithm in a diagrammatical way so the important thing is diagrammatical way yeah and how we are going to make these flowcharts in diagrams there are some kind of flowchart symbols that you have to use they are predefined i'll explain you all these symbols later on in this video so remember that flowcharts are designed by using flowchart symbols and every flowchart symbol has its own meaning. And again, the important thing that I want to mention is the order is very, very important. Every step needs to be in order. So when you make a flowchart, you have to be careful that the order will be uh, very accurate or the order must be followed according to the algorithm that you have already created. Okay, so now the second part of this video is let's see the flowchart symbols that helps us to make any of the flowchart for an algorithm. So I am going to show you all these symbols and will explain you the definition of each in detail. Okay, flowchart symbols okay the very first symbol is the terminator flowchart symbol we also call it begin slash end remember that whenever you start a task or you end a task or if we talk about in terms of a programmer then a programmer writes a program every time when he wants to do some task so that program must have an start and must have an end or I stop. So the flowchart symbols that are used to represent the start of a task and to represent the end of a task is known as the terminator flowchart symbol. 
begin slash end we call it a terminator flow chart symbol and how it looks like it is just like a rectangle but with the round corners let me just make it for you it's a rectangle but remember that the corners must be little round so you can simply write if it is a start of a process just write down start in the center of this particular shape and if it is the end of a flow chart so make the same thing uh, symbol for it the terminator flow chart symbol with the route corners and write down stop inside it so these are the two terminator symbols that you use in order to represent the start and the stop of your program okay now we know that every time when we perform something we need to have some process for it or we call it actions so the second flowchart symbol that we use is known as the process flowchart symbol and this particular symbol is basically used in order to represent any action that you perform to complete your task let's suppose we assign some values to a variable so this is a very common action that we do during our process so what we will do we will just make it a rectangle and then we will assign a variable a value in this way i'll explain you later on uh, how it works but for now just remember that whenever you perform any action you have to use this process flowchart symbol okay one thing here is that some of some are the processes are those that are part of your program and some are the processes are those that you use that are already defined somewhere and you just use it in order to complete your task very simple let me just explain you this thing let's suppose i want to sort out some of my numbers and i have already a program or i have already a function for that so what you need you just need to call that particular function so for this whenever a process is already defined somewhere and you just use it so you can use this process flowchart symbol then you are not supposed to use this one the first one is used the first this one a rectangle is used whenever you perform any action that is only part of your process or your program but whenever you use some other process that is already de defined somewhere else and you just use it to complete your own task you have to use the second process symbol so let's suppose i'm using a sort list function that is already defined somewhere and i am just using it in order to complete my task but this sort list it's it's not a function in your program so remember that there are, there is a difference between these two process symbols okay so now next is the input and output flowchart symbol let me explain you this one it is very very important in some of the programs that you take input from a user or you just give some output to a user so you are supposed to use this kind of flowchart symbol for this input and output flowchart symbol so let me just make it for you this is just like a parallelogram this way in this particular symbol you are going to represent any of your input and output how you will do that if it is an input let's suppose you want to take a name of a user as an input so just write down name input name so here name is basically a variable where the user's name is going to be saved when a user will input its name so this is one kind of flowchart symbol and same goes for the output so for output you will write down output here and just write down any of something that you want to show to a user let's suppose you want to show hello world a message so this is how you going to use this flowchart input and output symbols
Okay, so the next flowchart symbol is quite interesting and this is very, very useful when you have to take some decision in your program. So it's a decision flowchart symbol. Let me make it for you. Okay, this decision flowchart symbol is a kind of diagram. Just wait a second. Okay, here. It's a kind of diamond like this. And inside that, you have to just write down the statement that is basically important in order to make a decision. Let's suppose you want to compare two variables, A and B. So write down, let's suppose A is greater than B. This particular statement will have two answers or have two outcomes. What is that? Either A will be greater than B. Let's suppose these are two variables that are storing some value. If A is equals to 4 and B is equals to 5. So this statement will be wrong. A greater to B means B is greater. In this case, B is greater. So the answer would be no. The statement becomes false. And let's suppose if I switch the values, Let's suppose A is 5 and B is 4. So now the statement will be yes. So this particular statement must have two answers according to the values of variables. So in this way, we make a decision either if the statement is yes, you have to do something else. Just call another process. And let's suppose if the statement is no or false you have to do some other work. So this is very important whenever you have to decide between the two answers or you have to decide according to the user what he gives the output, what he gives the input for A and B. So this kind of decision flowchart symbol is very important when you have to decide according to the user's wish or according to the values uh, that you expect for the variables. So this is very important and I will explain you this particular decision symbol in more detail in my next videos when we will see the flowchart examples. So you will come to know that how we are going to use it. Okay, the very last is the flow lines. Flow lines are basically helps us to join all these flowchart symbols and it also helps us to understand the order of your particular program or task. So yes, the last one is after decision flowchart symbol, we have flow lines. So the function of flow lines is basically, they are kind of arrows to show the direction of flow, which is usually but not always top to bottom and left to right. What it means, it means that flow lines are usually from top to bottom and from left to right. This is the direction of your flow of the program. But sometimes it is not necessary that the direction would be from top to bottom and from left to right. In some cases, it can change like it can be from down to top and from right to left. So it depends upon your need that how you are going to flow your program or how you are going to change the direction of your program. So the important thing is that you just use these flow lines in order to tell the flow of your flowchart. Just like this, two flowchart symbols are being connected by using a flow line so that you can see that this is your step number one and this is your step number two. So this is in order to represent the direction of your flowchart. So these are all the flowchart symbols and flow lines that is very, very important in order to represent any of your algorithm in a diagrammatical way. Now in the next video, I am going to share the example of some of the flowcharts that can help you to understand this topic in more detail. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned and do not forget to subscribe the channel. Bye-bye.